Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about cross-site request forgery and cross-site scripting. This topic is a very important topic for CISSP, CCSP, CSSLP, ISSAP exam. So I thought I will make one video on this and in this video we're going to discuss some coffee shots which is questions. If you're new to my YouTube channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. Thank you. Okay, so first part, I thought let me start with the snacks this time. So if you go by the description of CSRF, it's saying that it is an attack that forces and and user to execute unwanted action on web application in which they are currently authenticated. So what is this all about? Let me explain you with the reference. Example, we have a hacker. So we have an hacker. He hosted one website. So this is basically called as a website. And uh, he give the URL to this website example like exam study dot com. This is the URL of the website exam dot com. Now he hosted one web page in this website and in that he give the space for the image. But instead of adding an image, instead of adding an image in that space, he add the URL. Now, example like URL is this kind of a URL he added. URL was http gmail.com reset password equal to new password and whatever the password. So this is the predefined URL which is basically added in this particular space. Instead of adding an image, he add this particular URL. And we have another user. Give me a second. We have another user here. So we have a user. Now what happened? User basically open a browser. So this is the browser. In browser, he has a two tab, tab one and tab two. Normally when you see the Google Chrome, so you can see that. Now hacker basically sent the URL of this particular website to the user. Hey user, please check this link examstart.com. A very good website for practice questions. So what user did, user open a browser. In one browser, in one tab, he typed gmail.com. Gmail.com. And through this, he connected with the Gmail website. So this is basically my Gmail website. So what happened user is already connected to Gmail and he opened the mailbox here in the mailbox. He can see one message that hey prab, hey user, please find the examstud.com and he basically click on the examstud.com. Now what happened user basically connected with the website and page were delivered to user on his browser. So in the second tab, the page is basically load, but the strange part was that the page was blank because page was blank. The image space, which we given the size and the width of the image was one equal to height and one equal to width. So you can't see that image. So definitely when we discover or when we find any page blank and all that, we refresh the page. When we refresh this particular page, it has a predefined URL, which is basically called HTTP gmail.com. So as a user already, the user is already authenticated with Gmail. Default that script request goes to Gmail. Gmail thought the user has requested to reset the password because he already authenticate on a Gmail website. And this is how the user password get reset it with the new password. So that is why it said attack that force an end user to execute unwanted action. So. I as a user or my victim, 
just refresh the page he was not aware about that page has a script which is called httpgmail.com reset password equal to password the page load the refresh and then after the refresh the page the script is generated and it is connected with the gmail which is on which he was already authenticated so here we basically exploit the trust the server has on the user because server thought user has requested for the query and i have to execute that that is when the pass if you notice your friends also said the same thing one day i click on the link and after that my account was reset because that link has a predefined request and here the gmail received the request to reset the password so the countermeasure is basically creating a random token okay synchronized token random token enable capture unique per user session token should be unpredictable so if you have such kind of because here the hacker discovered gmail is not using any kind of a token because token this is how we track the session we just add the http gmail.com reset password equal to new password but now for pre and post authentication we have a different token value so gmail first validate is it a same token which user has sent which is claimed to be if token is basically different it will definitely reset if token is basically different then gmail will not accept the connection and that's why nowadays if you want to reset the password also you want to validate the password also it will always ask for the captcha so always remember one thing one of the most effective way to counter this attack is synchronize the session token random token captcha unique per user session unpredictable token so crs token prevent csr because without token the attacker cannot create a valid request to backend server because here is a hacker hacker basically send the url to the user okay on his email as user is already authenticate on a gmail because to check the email so he already authenticate on gmail but there is no token on the url now when user basically refresh the page the user refresh the page that has a predefined request which goes to gmail gmail thought user has reset for the password and he confirm the new password so that is how the csrf works so let me discuss some questions so which type of attack forces an end user to execute unwanted action on a web application they are currently authenticated so option a sql injection cross site request forgery cross site scripting and session hijacking see in the case of session hijacking we hijack the session we have a system a and we have a server so we have a hacker hacker basically discover the communication which is a sent to server b server sent to a hacker spoof the aip and then he hijack the session but in this case the question talking about attack forces end user to execute unwanted action okay so session session hijacking is removed sql injection is basically a technique in which we penetrate into database and extract the information so a and b removed left with b and c cross site scripting is all about injecting a script into the website but here the question talking about which type of attack force end user so only option which is very close is the answer is cross site request forgery so let's move to the next coffee shot thank you oh it look like a scenario question so you are working as a security consultant in the organization recently you have noticed a bit of help from social engineering okay social engineering an attacker may trick a user of a web application into executing actions of the attacker choosing if the victim is a regular user a successful attack can force the user to perform state changing request like transfer fund deleting account so you can see this is the action they talking about which type of attack are we referring to the scenario d and a is already removed as it saying that attacker may trick the user so it might be by sending him phishing page he refresh that refresh page generate a predefined script which can state change the request or transferring the fund or deleting the ac account so always remember whenever the question talking about actions user authenticated these kind of a keywords are there it means we are misusing the user who connected with the server as i said this is the hacker this is the user and user is already authenticated with the gmail so this is my gmail so now what happened user is already authenticated with the gmail so when hacker basically send an email okay user click on the mail he was redirect to one page page is basically provide him blank page he refresh the page it has a script as he already authenticated whatever so gmail basically assume on the authenticate session whatever the user sending i have to reset i have to accept 
So in this case, this request can be reset password. The request can be transfer fund. The request can be delete account. Okay, so transfer fund is there. Delete account is there. Account modification is there because he already authenticated. So at attacker basically misuse the power authentication. So A and D is removed. The only option base which is left is basically cross site request forgery. That's why I'm going with the answer B. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Thank you. Okay, so you are working as a security consultant in the organization. Recently, you have noticed that with the bit of help on social engineering, attacker may trick the user of a web application into executing actions of the attacker choosing. If the victim is a regular user, successful CRSF attack can force a user to perform state changing request. This time they already highlighted CSR request. The user to perform the state changing requests like transferring fund and deleting account. Which of the following technique is the most effective in preventing CSRF attack? This time they're talking about what is a countermeasure. Option A, CSRF token should be unique per session with predictable large random value with unlimited time frame. It is okay, but I will not go with the A because of this keyword, which is called predictable. Because if if the value is predictable, any hacker can predict the value and he can inject the predefined URL. So that is one of the reason. But I'm not saying that I'm not going with that because of unique per session and random value with unlimited time frame is also another concern because I want the token value should be uh, should should have some kind of expiry. Option B is CSRF token should be static for all session. But in that case, it is more vulnerable. It's clearly said that static for all session with predictable large ram uh, random value. Option three is CSRF token should not be transmitted using a cookies, but it is lead to a session hijacking. And option D is CSRF token or synchronizer token should be unique per session, which is true with unpredictable. Okay unpredictable large random value so two keywords are there synchronizer token which is basically generating a sync token along with that unpredictable large value which no one can able to predict so this is how we can able to defeat the csrf attack that's why i'm going with the answer d let's move to the next part so we have done with the cross-site request forgery now we'll discuss about cross-site scripting so it is an attack it cross-site scripting attack are the type of injection in which malicious scripts are injected into the otherwise binning and trusted website. This is the statement you need to remember. Injected into the website this time. Okay, so access uh, uh, attack occurs when attacker use a web application to send the malicious code generally in a form of browser side script to a different end user. So countermeasure is ensuring that all variables go through validations and output encoding is recommended when you need to safely display the data. So I'm sure that okay, by just reading this statement will not make any sense about what is cross-site scripting. So let me explain you with the reference of my diagram. So we have a user here, which is a hacker. And uh, we have a legitimate user here. And uh, this is basically the popular website. Popular website. So what happened is this website is supposed to Reddit. Okay, Reddit. So as I am a hacker, I know this website is basically has a great reputation in the market. There's a lot of people visit this website. So now I will basically use this website as an attack vector. First of all, I will try to discover in this website, there is an input validations issues or not. Input validation means accept the input without verifying. So I discovered some input validation issue and I posted a script I posted a script on this website in a form of some resources. Hey, find, hey guys, please find the CISSP resources. And I give the script link here. So the, so I post this script on the Reddit website. Now what happened? This user visit the page. The page is basically load in his browser like this. reddit.com and here he can see the script 
here you can see the script hey find css resources so what happen is he click on that request now try to understand here when he click on the request the request information sent to the server like hey i want to execute this hey a server thought user has requested for this script to be processed and without verifying anything server basically process script back to the client and then that script basically crash the system take the data and everything because when you click on the link it mean you have requested the server to process this link so that is why you send the request back to the server the server basically reply back and the script was basically process on his system that script can lead to hacking a server or hacking a system or installing a trojan or shut down the system next time the legitimate user will think twice before visiting the reddit website so in this case what happen is we basically exploit the trust the server has on the user or user has on the server because when he click on this link the server thought the user has processed this and when server process that and send it back to user user thought anything coming from the server it is trusted because here the trust was directly depending upon the server so that is a thin line difference we have in the csrf and cross site scripting in csrf it is purely we exploiting a trust uh, the server has on a user because user click on the link server thought user has requested but in the cross site scripting we injected the script directly on the server we waiting for the people to visit the page and load the script on their browser and when they click they will send the request to server server basically process back to the user whatever the script is coming from any website user basically thought it is coming from the server so they will they will think twice before uh, you know visiting the website again so that is a thin line difference between the cross site request forgery and cross site scripting so if i go back csrf are the type of injection in which malicious script are injected in into otherwise banning and trusted website access attack occurs when attacker use the web application to send malicious code generally in a form of browser side script to a different end user and countermeasure is basically what input validation which is called ensure all variables go through the validation so if i'm trying to inject any kind of a script on the reddit forum they should validate first okay and output encoding whatever the output is basically processed this is also need to be validated so this is the countermeasure we have so let's discuss some questions security analyst discover a vulnerability on the website that enable an attacker to insert malicious code into the website web application other client also visit the infected website so now here what happened attacker already injected the script that's why it's saying visited to the infected website other client visited the infected website and the malicious code run on the victim browser resulted in the stolen cookies hijack sessions and malware execution which type of attack on the company website they carrying out question have a keywords is which of the following attack on the company website it is a server side okay one more important thing you need to remember is cross site request script, cross site scripting okay it is basically done because of the flaw in the server side script because server doesn't validate so it without validating they process all the request which is coming from the client okay so that is why the biggest concern of this attack happen is whatever the user is click on the link all the request goes to server to process and server without verifying that they process back to the server okay you asking me answer is this you asking me the answer is this so same like when he visit the page he click on the link the link request goes to reddit server reddit server basically verifying anything we process back to the system if they doing a proper validation on the server side they will give the error that this service is doesn't available this script is prohibited this kind of error should be done, generate but what happen is whatever the request we sending back to the server they processing it and reverting back to the user and the script is coming from the reddit so they will not going to trust the website again and that is same thing happen here insert the malicious code into website so here is a hacker he insert the malicious code on the website and other clients are basically start visiting that and through this particular website we delivering the malware to other websites or other user so what kind of an attack is that sql injection is injecting the sql queries into database so a remove ransomware is basically a process of encrypt ransomware is a attack where we it encrypt the files cross site request forgery we have already discussed where we exploit the authentication but the question is not talking about anything related to the state change request question has a keyword inserting a malicious code into the web application so that's why the answer is cross site scripting we have a two type of cross site scripting 
stored and reflective stored is basically where the script was permanently stored on the website and reflective is where we generating a url and directly sending to the user on his email that is called reflective cross site scripting so let's move to the next coffee shot okay so which of the following is a true statement of cross site scripting option a cross site scripting are the type of injection in which malicious script are injected into otherwise banning and trusted website which is true Accesses attack occur when attacker uses a web application to send malicious code generally in a form of browser side script to a different end user which makes sense. Option B cross site scripting attack are the type of injection which malicious script are injected into user system and hijack the session but that is more like a session hijacking. So B removed. C it is an attack that occur when malicious website email block instant message or program causes a user web browser to perform unwanted action on trusted website when user is authenticated but this definition is more like a CSRF. cross site scripting are the type of injection which malicious script are injected into the otherwise binning and trusted website it is an attack that occur when malicious website email instant message user browser to perform unwanted action on a trusted website when user is authenticated but this is more like a cross site request forgery so only option which is very close is answer a let's move to the next coffee shot a website for infosec train has a guest book where the user where the site visitor can leave their comment about the service example we have a user and he visit the infosec train website where he have a guest post where he can script put the comment but there is a possibility attacker use the same opportunity instead of adding a comment he can add the script but here they saying that guest book where the site visitor can leave the comment about the service whenever user visit the page uh, to the po- uh, whenever the user visit the page to the post comment message box is prompt with the message called you hacked during an audit of the website security analyst discovered the website is vulnerable for the cross site scripting vulnerability so which of the following technique is the most effective in preventing the cross site scripting vulnerability in the website okay option a filter input on client server server side which is a very close option just defining a content security policy we can't block that implementing encryption in data and transit is more about data security in the transit phase and web application firewall only help us to filter so only option which is very closed is basically answer is a filter inputs on client and server side if you find this video useful do share in your network and do share your feedback on a comment box what is the next video you want me to create i will try my best to create that video and if you new to my youtube channel do subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos thank you